Okay, once again, there have been requests to change the schedule. <laughs> but it, but it, but it, but 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 nothing's happened the last 10 minutes. Um, okay, so, <laughs> hey, count your blessings around here. Um, okay, so the current plan is, okay, there's a, there's a lecture today on lower extremity. I have done a, a prosection of the gluteal region and the back of the thigh and the back of the calf. Uh, this material will not be on the current exam, it won't be anything until the final, so I haven't flipped it over and done the front of the leg or the foot. We'll get to that. Um, okay, so today's lecture, and then there's a, there's, a, there's a bit of a prosection if you want to wander in for any reason, we can go over it, or you can do it sometime between now and the middle of, middle of November. There is no class tomorrow. Wednesday, there is a scheduled review when we will be in the lab from one till whenever to answer questions, go over the sections or whatever. Friday, I have had, well, some in the midst of, planning a practice penny. Uh, neither, or none of us, will, none of the three faculty here will be here, but Mr. Heritage will be there and, and we'll find some other people who could do a practice penny for you if you would like. And then on Saturday afternoon, Dr. Fernandez will be there from one till midnight, I cut right, one till midnight, okay. exactly. one to four uh, in the lab to answer questions or go over any, any problems you have. And then on Halloween, one o'clock in the afternoon, not the middle of the night, uh, we will have a lab exam followed by a written exam in lecture hall five. That is the current plan. There was a proposal floated sometime out there in the blazing sun um, <laughs> that people wanted to not have a pinning on Friday, but to throw the pinning in on Wednesday's class. And then there would be practice pinning on Wednesday's class and no one would bother to show up on Friday. Um, we could take a vote or you could, you could caucus afterwards. Um, I don't really care. I'm going to be here Wednesday one way or the other, and not here Friday one way or the other. I'll just tell Tina not to show up. Um, or you can have pending on Saturday. I don't really care about that either. It's his job. Uh, what's, the, what's the general feeling? Or should I leave it up to your president to uh, resolve these things as presidents are wanting to do? Don't all speak at once. Come on, Wednesday. What? Wednesday. All right, well, I'm here. Who's here? Who wants to do Wednesday? Who's here? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to deal with, you know, democracy is all fine and good, but, but if there's a significant portion that, that you know, has other schedules, I, I not, such as life, <laughs> it's either unanimous or not. I don't want to, um, I don't want to get into business of, you know, 20 to 30 percent minorities feeling, hey, you know, I have a dentist appointment or I have another Sorry. exam, all right. <laughs> I'm getting married or whatever. <laughs> well, get back to that. <laughs> Isn't it great having a party? I'm yeah. getting married on Saturday. <laughs> okay. Okay, so today, as I mentioned to you, um, we're having a lecture on the lower extremity. It will not be on the current exam, but there will be a few questions and maybe a pin or two on the final. My, the main reason for this is, first of all, when I talked to second year students over the summer, they said, gee, you know, we learned most of the body, but we didn't learn anything about the lower extremity. And I thought, well, we'll work on that. And then, like I say, I heard a rumor from someone at another university that, that there are occasionally lower extremity questions thrown in on your boards. And then the third reason is, gee, you've taken a course, you'd say, oh, gee, I took anatomy at Stony Brook, but you know, it stopped about right here. <laughs> so I don't know anything about the lower community. So I figured we could spare an hour or so, a little bit of time in the lab going over it. Okay, so the lower extremity, not unlike, oh, God, I forgot the point. 
not unlike the upper extremity, has a girdle, a big bone up at the top, two little bones below that, and then a bunch of, instead of having carpals, it has tarsals, instead of having metacarpals, it has metatarsals, oh good, thank you, and it has phalanges. So there's a certain uh, similarity there, and I'm going to play on that similarity um, all the way through this talk. Okay, a notable difference is that whereas the shoulder girdle was very, very loosely attached to the vertebral column, you know, it was sort of like, you know, it's floating mostly on the back, but there's a clavicle that attaches to the manubrium, which sort of attaches to the sternum, um, but it's a lot more mobile. The lower extremity is very tightly attached because the sacrum is articulated with the ilium up here, and it's much firmer connection, doesn't wobble around anymore. Okay, start at the top. You know this bone. You've seen it before. We talked about it a bit uh, <coughs> when we did abdomen. Uh, the, uh, the pelvic bone with three major components, the ilium up here, the ischium back there, the pubis. And, you know, in development, they start off as three separate bones, but then they fuse. And you know all the most of the bony parts there. There it is from the other side. There they are tied together, but you will note, again, not only is there an attachment between a uh, synovial joint, between the sacrum <coughs> and the iliac up here, known as the sacroiliac joint, but there are also some very heavy ligaments attaching the sacrum to parts of the ischium. There's a sacrospinous ligament here, the spine of the ischium down there, the big tight ligament there, and then a great big ligament going from the sacrum down to the ischial tuberosity, the sacrospinous ligament and the sacrotuberous ligament. So, you know, this whole complex of sacrum and pelvis is very, very tightly tied together. The big bone, you remember the upper extremity was the humerus. Uh, the big one down the lower extremity is the femur. Okay, and, and like most bones, it has a head, and behind the head, as usual, there's a neck. There were tubercles in the humerus, but in the femur, they're called trochanters. It's a greater trochanter and a lesser trochanter, and then a long, thick shaft back down here, and then a distal end, which has what are called condyles. The ones in the humerus are sort of condyles, but they rarely go. They have separate names. Here you just have a medial condyle and a lateral condyle, and then an intercondylar have, um, space there. And, but so there's a, you know, a big articulation here that articulates with the acetabulum on the pelvis, and this distal end articulates with the tibia. Below that, Again, as in the upper extremity, you have two bones. Uh, it's slightly different than the upper extremity because the tibia here, the one on the inside, on the medial side of the, what is called the leg down here, um, is the only one that articulates with the femur. Uh, if you were a crocodile, your fibula might articulate with the femur, but in humans and most mammals, that's not the case. So you, Instead of in the, in, the humor, in the upper extremity, the humerus articulated with both the ulna and the radius. That's not the case down here. The femur articulates with the tibia, which has a plateau up here, two medial and lateral plateau. Mm -hmm. And then it's a big thick bone on the inside of the, of the leg. And it goes down and it has what's called a malleolus. On the lateral side out here is the fibula, a much thinner bone. Uh, which just articulates with the tibia up above, but down below it also has a malleolus and the, the foot structure is going to fit into there, the, the tarsal structures. As in the upper extremity, these two bones are tied together with an interosseous membrane. And again, you'll remember the upper extremity, there were a bunch of carpals up here, and then extending from them were metacarpals and then phalanges. In the foot, there are these are all tarsals. Uh, it's, it's very different in, in organization from the upper extremity because you have two great big ones back here, the calcaneus and then the talus. And the fibula and the tibia both articulate with this 
upper part of the talus, and the talus sits on the calcaneus, that's your heel bone back there. In front of that, there's rows of tarsals, area known as the midfoot. So there's two big ones back here at the beginning, a cuboid and a navicular, and then first, second, or third, or medial, middle, and uh, that one, the cuboid, had three cuneiforms, basically, first, second, third. Again, five metatarsals, and then in front of that, phalanges, three phalanges on each digit except for the first one. Just like the thumb, the big toe only has two phalanges, the proximal and distal. So much of what Dr. Fernandez told you about the upper extremity is sort of very similar to the lower extremity, the name just changed. Okay, so here they are articulated. This is from the front. This is from the back, showing the, the, mainly the, the blood vessels. So one thing you'll notice is very distinctive in the upper extremity is that the bulk of the blood going into the lower extremity comes from the anterior surface. So up here, the aorta divides into right and left common iliacs. The iliacs in turn, as you saw when we were in the abdomen up at the top, the, il these iliacs go down. Then you have an internal iliac artery, which sends blood mostly to structures down in the pelvis, but there's one artery that zips through down into the leg. And then there's an external iliac, which comes over the, the brim of the pelvis and goes down the front of the thigh. Okay, And at that point, it changes its name to the femoral artery. Okay, no sooner does it get formed as a femoral artery that it splits into a deep femoral, which goes down and does sort of stuff on the medial surface and flips around to the back. And then the femoral artery continues down the front side of the thigh, and it slips through a hole in a muscle down here and goes to the back of the knee joint. So there's a gap in a muscle here, it's femoral, 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 and when it flips over to the back of the knee joint, it changes its name to the popliteal artery, because the area behind the knee joint on the back side is known as the popliteal fossa. Once it gets, flips onto the front side here, it has a whole bunch of arteries going to parts of the knee. Then it goes down, and then it does something sort of, sort of screwy. Uh, it's, a, it's a tibial artery. Well. It's the, the, the tibial artery coming down on the back side, the tibial artery coming down and goes down basically behind the tibia and zooms down into the underside of the foot. So most of the front is all femoral and then when you get down below the knee it's flipped to the back side and this is the posterior tibial coming down here. Right as it gets just below, there's this gap in here above this interosseous membrane between tibia and fibula, it gives rise to a anterior tibial artery. And that little anterior tibial artery flips over to the front side and runs down this anterior area here and does the top of the foot, the front side of the foot. There's, as it goes from the front side of the tibia into the foot, Right above the talus here, there's a, a, a little artery called the dorsalis pedis, which is commonly used for taking pulses. If you're worried about some problems with the arteries down in here, you can take a pulse right on the top of the foot here. You can also take a pulse of the femoral artery right here in the groin region. Everywhere else is sort of hard to get at one. Okay, that's arterial supply. Veins. Okay, um, the big vein, the, well, there are, there, are, there are deep veins, there are deep veins that, that basically go back with the arteries to some degree. And so wherever there's a, an anterior tibial vein with the anterior tibial artery. Um, but the big veins that you, that you see in the lower extremity are, well, and then there's right where there's a femoral artery coming down front, there's a femoral vein then it splits and, and so forth and so on. Just where you have the plantar, the dorsal, the venous arch on the front, or the arterial arch on the front here, you have a venous arch. 
just as you have arteries on the lower side of the foot, you have arteries. So most of the deep arteries are similar to the deep, deep veins are similar to the arteries. However, there are some big superficial veins on the leg, which we'll dissect out sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, running up the inside of the thigh, inside of the leg, starting on the top of the foot, going behind this, going right by the front of this malleolus here, down in the ankle, on the lateral side, up alongside where the fifth, no, the medial malleolus, the, I'm sorry, on the medial side, going by this malleolus, running up the inside of the calf, running up the inside of the thigh is this great big vein okay, known as the great saphenous vein. And it dumps into the femoral vein right up in the groin. Okay, you can usually, I mean this thing is, is very superficial. And it, because it's also, I mean it picks up little bits coming in from the side, but it's a very, very long uh, piece of, of, of vein. And so that often when the, a surgeon needs some some vein, some sort of circulatory tube uh, to replace something. They go in and make a slit here and a slit here and pull out that saphenous vein and may use it, may use it for um, coronary arteries uh, or for any other vein that they need because it's a long thing with not a lot of obvious branches. So you can, you can pull it out and have a lot of spare material to work with. So often, you, sometimes you go in and you find little slits here, and there's no saphenous vein left. Yeah. Do the valves in the veins interfere with the coronary being on the coronary? Um, apparently not. Uh, probably they can cut out the valves if need to, or find stretches. The valves are, are just randomly set through there. I'm sure you can probably find areas. Okay. On the back side of the calf. Okay. There's another big vein running down the middle part there, known as the small saphenous vein. So these are pretty obvious um, superficial structures. Here you can, you can even see.